Hey, what's going on guys? Comic again Z here. In this video, we're going to be talking about whether where the chess engine's strength is coming from. So, uh, you know, like, uh, as a chess programmer and as YouTuber who does really lots of tutorials on chess programming, uh, I, you know, like, uh, the question that I do encounter the most is how to write a strong chess engine. So, you know, like, People are going crazy about strength, about power and strength in general, and it's not only the matter of chess programming. Unfortunately, this is something that happens in the world in general, and probably that's the, way, that's the reason why the world is going probably not the best ever direction. Uh, and for some reason, people don't understand that all this strength and all this power they're trying to develop, they're not going to take this with their own selves when they die. And the same about the chess programming as well. Well, you might wonder that, yeah, uh, a developer might die, but the chess engine would live forever. However, you know, like, it doesn't really mean that much as well. Uh, okay, I'm just kidding, guys. Uh, but um, I just I just said this once in order to avoid uh, expressing my own opinion at, uh, on the matter of uh, the strength of the chess engines in general. Because for me personally... The strength of the chess engine is probably something that uh, uh, that I'm interested uh, the, the something uh, something uh, I'm least interested in. Uh, so I uh, probably the most the most like thing that I don't really care about. And I hope that through this video we'll get an idea why is that so. And anyway, uh, so here I just wanted to share uh, my page on chessprogramming.org. So chess program uh, Wikipedia is the great resource for chess programming for chess programmers as well. And here is a list of the major chess engines that I've made. And uh, there are much more, but uh, it, it, this list just covers the, the major kind of branches. So there are many derivatives from this sort of an engines, uh, engines as well. Uh, and mm, you can actually walk through uh, 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 each of those. One, one, one of the most significant, significant works is this BBC Chess Engine, which, is the, which really stands for Bitboard Chess. The most, uh, probably the easiest to understand engine that involves bitboards. So, kind of like uh, I try to, I try to take uh, like world standards for today's chess programming, and then implement them in the simplest way possible. The entire engine is a single source file, a single C source file. And here is the list of the of 95 videos I've made so far. Well, they didn't even, uh, uh, they didn't actually add all the videos. Now it's 95. And also I was working on some GUI for this sort of a stuff, some uh, uh, experiments with uh, efficient lab readable neural networks from Stockfish, etc. So uh, obviously those of you who have been subscribed to this channel for quite a bit of time, you all know me know me well, guys. But just for those who who, who has come across this channel uh, eventually, accidentally, not intentionally, right? For those guys, just to give you a, a brief idea about my own self. So the reason why I actually want to speak uh, not, not, the, not the reason why I want to speak about where the chess engine strength comes from, but uh, more likely the reason why I hope I can speak about this. So, uh, here is the deal. Uh, that the, the, the biggest issue, uh, the biggest edge issue in today's chess program in the world is the matter of being original, right? So, let's say, well, I don't know, probably, well, uh, just uh, I didn't really prepare that much for this video. Uh, again, like just the problem is that uh, I'm I'm getting really lots of requests. Like, please explain, please describe uh, why uh, how to make a how to make a strong engine, please, and so on, so on. And recently, uh, I got a commentary uh, with the uh, with a request to make an overview of the Molido chess engine, which is a very nice chess engine in C. And I did have a look at the source code. I really love what I see there. Uh, but when I did that, uh, I realized that I don't really need to make a separate overview regarding the single uh, given engine. But I feel like I can make an overview of all the engines that are about like 3000 elo points rating and, and greater. So just to give you an idea, so we just go to ccrl.com. Uh, the computer chess rating list. Let's go to Blitz part, and 
so here is the, so the first uh, the first how many how many of them nowadays 81 engine with 3000 plus elo so you know like here is here is something that here is one of the reasons uh why it's just so funny you know i like guess so all this all of these engines all of the, not not all of them but many of these uh engines you know like i don't want to say that they all are the same obviously not and there are really great ones among them uh but the deal is that you know like if you want to create an engine that is at least 3000 elo points uh, uh it would, uh, that would have at least 3000 elo points you are already tied up uh in terms of picking up some sort of a design patterns uh like board representation uh search techniques being involved uh obviously having multi-threading and things like that so you know like the stronger engine becomes uh the the less uh, the less originality uh remains in that sort of an engine and i just want to highlight some parts that are kind of almost absolutely the same for all the engines it's just a matter of picking up the uh, programming language like c or c plus plus or maybe uh trying different styles of code uh it, well most guys uh, go in for splitting source files into many source in many source files just just like it's like, like it's done in stockfish and even the file names and even more even like the variable names and structure names so it, it's all very very similar so you know like when i have a look at the source code of the engines that are stronger than three thousands it feels like um I'm, I'm i'm looking at a single engine so I, I can't really see that much difference there because it's all about kind of like the same and the major problem is that if someone wants to come up with a strong engine and start with this 3000 plus examples uh the downside of this kind of approach is that uh all these strong engines uh they do use they do implement the most basic things which we'll cover in this video as well but the problem is they do obfuscate the, the implementation itself for to sacrifice everything for performance for performance and yeah literally for just to sacrifice uh, everything for performance reasons and the problem is that if you don't know the core parts uh, that the chess engine consists of, it's really hard to answer the question where actually this amazing strength is coming from, right? So the very first thing that I would like to do in this video, before anything else, before walking through the code, like having a, having a look at the examples, etc., and so on and so forth, I just really, I just really want to break down. Uh, I just really want to break down the core parts uh, that the, main, the the modern chess engine consists of. Uh, briefly describe those parts, and then just uh, trying to walk through every part in separate. And then when it comes to actually search, I will go for a comparison. So I've prepared three engines. So one of them is my own JavaScript engine, Ukun. OkunJS, also the Molito that it was requested for an overview, and obviously Stockfish because that's something that <laughs> where where all the roots come to basically because uh, obviously the stronger the strongest of open source chess engine uh, really influences all of these guys in like more or less. But again, like you just you you just can't make a three thousand plus uh, uh, chess engine. And meanwhile, make it not not look like Stockfish. So if it's that strong, that definitely would be. It, it's not going to be a Stockfish clone, obviously. Uh, but anyway, it's really kind of like going there, really. So really, they all are similar. Okay, so I'm not sure if I can actually find this at Chess Programming on its own. But let's go for main page, like principle basics. Yeah, actually. Actually, this uh, main page and basics on chess, pro on chess programming in Wikipedia is is the core part. So here is the list of three most essential uh, parts that the chess engine consists of. So board, uh, board representation and 
the bund uh, bundled with along with the mode generator. So that's the core module that allows engine to actually generate the legal moves, right? For every given position and do that recursively. So by saying recursively, what I mean is the following. So let's have it's white. Let's say it's white to move. So we have uh, we have a list of of legal moves in the current position. So let's say this is let's say this is the starting position uh, of, of the game of chess. So we can move pawn like a to a three to a four, b two b three, b two b four, c two c three, c three c four, and so and so. And then the knights knight g one to h three, knight g one to f to f three, knight and b1 to a3, knight b1 to c3. Uh, uh, entirely there are 20 moves. And then for every move that is done by whites, we can do, we can make responses for black. And this would be the uh, kind of depth to search or better to say perf because uh, we use the word perf, which means, which stands for performance test. But literally when people say perf in the chess programming world, it means like, uh, running the move generator to generate the moves recursively to make sure that the number of traversed positions uh, matches the certain values. And that is the matter of how people make sure that the, the move generators, uh, that the move generators of, of their chess programs are bug free. So uh, that's the first and the most essential, the most important part. Without this sort of a part, uh, there is no chess engine, basically. So the move generation part, and the mode generation uh, heavily, heavily relies on the board representation itself. And there are two major approaches in board representation. So the uh, internally, like within the chess engine itself, in order to make this move somehow and to take them back. So to make this recursive tree traversal, uh, there are two major approaches. So either the array based or uh, bit board based board representation. While array based is very, is very, kind of trivial one, so it's just uh, an array of integers. There are many ways of how to formulate that array, like hexadecimal 88 or 10 by uh, 10 by 12. Uh, oh God, I forgot. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm just, uh, I'm up with Chinese chess at the moment, so I don't, don't remember how this, uh, the, uh, the certain uh, values in, uh, in the or in the international Western chess, but that doesn't matter at the moment. So we have the rate based ones, and the bitboard based ones. And bitboards, uh, so what is the bitboard? Bitboard is a uh, 64-bit unsigned integer. So there is, uh, there is just an integer where we have the bits that are either zero or one. And the idea is that when we have a bit equal, so uh, this 64 bits represents 64 squares on a chessboard. And if we have, uh, say, bitboard for white pawns, uh, we can uh, use we, we can turn on the bits where the uh, uh, we can turn on the bits occupied by white pawns, and same for all the pieces like white pawns, white knights. Like let's say an in initial position for white knights, there would be only two bits occupied because there are only two white knights in, this, in, in the initial position. Same for bishops, rooks, uh, only one bit for queen, only one bit for king. Then people also make things like occupancy, uh, occupancy bits. So like uh, uh, the bit board where all the bits are turned on where the white pieces stand and the same where the black pieces stand. And then uh, the general occupancy, uh, occupancy like we're uh, highlighting both white and black pieces uh, being uh, represented as the bits being turned on. And the reason uh, behind there, there are two major reasons behind bitboards. So generally, bitboards are faster, and all the modern uh, engines uses so-called magic bitboards, which is today's de facto standard. Again, like there are uh, some variations on how exactly the magic bitboards might be implemented. Say, uh, fancy magic bitboards and plain magic bitboards. The plain one are easier, but they take a bit more memory. That that is the technique that I've. Uh, covered in my 95 video series on uh, making a bit board chess engine in C, by the way. So uh, the idea is mm, uh, there are two major reasons why to use bit boards. And again, like uh, bearing in mind the fact that uh, we are talking about where the chess uh, engine strength, strength is coming from. So the most major thing is the performance. So uh, it should be fast, so uh, it should have a fast move generator. Well, uh, I need to say that the fast move generator itself is not even a half 
of the engine strength i would say probably it's around i don't know maybe 20 percent so it's not the major part so if you have uh, a very slow mode generator but search from stockfish still your engine would be really 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 uh strong uh, so it it, it uh, because of a bad mode generator because of a weak slow mode genera generator your engine can lose 100 200 300 elo points maybe 500 elo points right but it's not that that much really because it still would be like not Three and uh, uh, three thousand and five hundreds, but let's say two thousand and five hundred. Uh, let's say only three thousands. But th this is still the major uh, kind of like number, uh, like uh, quite pretty. Uh, that, that would be still quite pretty strong engine. However, if we do this on the country, so let's say we take uh, Mugen Raider from Stockfish, which is incredibly optimized and very fast on its own. And let's say we don't do any move ordering at all within the search. In that case, this light and fast Stockfish's mode generator would be uh, like, I don't know, maybe uh, 1,500 uh, health points or 1,600. So it won't, be, it won't even be 2,000, right? It would be incredibly weak. So just to give you an idea that uh, even though that uh the the speed of the mode generator is really important still it's not the major uh it's not the major influence on the total overall uh strength outcome right so now the reason why to use bitboard so in the previous times where uh, when efficiently updated, updatable neural networks neural networks uh, were not yet invented uh, the major reason for for using uh, bitboards uh, was the handcrafted evaluation, and the idea is that with bitboards you can uh, perform operation. Uh, you can use bitwise operations to answer really numerous evaluation parameters uh, to to answer uh, the questions uh, in regards to numerous evaluation parameters like uh, open files, let's say, pond structure, mobility etc so it's really it's really the matter of uh, uh, a single bitwise operation so it's really fast and again like in the uh, back in the day the idea was uh, was uh, so the hand gravity evaluation was the only possible one and in order to make it stronger it was the matter of trying to uh, involve as many evaluation per as many parameters as possible so not only just p square tables to give an idea to give the engine an idea where to develop its pieces but also things like pawn structure key and safety piece mobility and so on and so on so re really lots of things there uh but again like uh, uh and yeah and then when uh, all the well, when the entire uh, when the entire evaluation has been replaced by efficient updatable ne neural networks all this huge amount of work that has been done through years doesn't make much sense any longer to be honest so yeah it's just kind of going to nowhere at the moment currently so and in this regard uh the uh, bitboards doesn't make sense however uh there is a uh, there is a major reason why to use bitboards uh bitboard move generator so still it's uh, it's faster than the rate based one and one of the mm, well again like uh i would say it's faster compared to existing not very optimized array based implementations however however uh, currently let's say on talk chess forum uh there was a topic somewhere where harman Harm Mueller was discussing uh the ways of how to opt how, how actually to optimize the array based mode generator as well uh which might give uh, also very uh promising results but it's not the case now uh it just happened so that the array based uh, array based engines in general were really uh, all, were always weak and slow and pit forward engines were always fast and strong so that just like historically this had to happen historically right uh, but it's not the case really so the idea is the attacks so uh, when we want to generate the moves one of the major issues is we need to make sure that keen has not been exposed into a check after the move is made on board and in order to answer that sort of a question we need to uh generate attacks uh for uh for for, for pieces and just to make sure that uh, those attacks 
uh, don't cover the kin square, right? So literally, that the kin is not getting again to getting into the attack. And uh, here is the deal. So when it comes, so uh, and, and again, like uh, the attack calculation is uh, used in two sort of a. There are two applications for them. So the first application is for remote generation purposes. Let's say we have a knight uh, on d4 in the center of the board. So there are uh, up to eight squares where the knight can potentially go, right? And these for these eight squares where the knight can go are the squares attacked by the knight. So on the one hand, we use attack. So we we uh, kind of encapsulate the term of let's say knight attacks, right? So this knight attacks is something that. Uh, uh, regards to the knight, to, to the knight, to the piece of of a knight, right? And let's say we're trying to generate a move. Uh, we use this attacks to uh, get the sword square where the knight uh, occupied by the knight, and get the target square where the knight can potentially go, right? And that's the way how we uh, generate the most to populate the move list to later on make them on board recursively and find the best one, right? But uh, when it comes to to answer the question whether the king has been exposed into a check, we need to say, uh, let's say, we need to generate the attacks uh, so king becomes like a super piece. And let's say we generate knight attacks for a king. And if on one of the eight target square there is a knight in the case, that means that this king is attacked by the knight. And uh, absolutely the same for all the rest of the pieces. And it's not really that expensive for leaper pieces like uh, pawns, kings, knights, uh, and that's it, right? But for sliding pieces like rooks, uh, bishops, and queens, this is really getting this is really getting uh, uh, getting uh, very expensive. So the major idea behind the bid boards is that um, it uh, gets rid of attacks that are being generated on the fly. Instead, they use lookup tables and the entire idea behind like why people actually do use bit boards that the, the reason is simply to uh, provide uh, pre-calculated attack tables for knights and for, for sorry <laughs> for all the pieces literally for leaper pieces like knights kings pawns and for slatter pieces like uh, bishops rooks and queens and the magic bit board, uh, magic bit boards, which is like the today's uh, de facto world standard, is is a hashing technique that allows to actually uh, minimize the size of the pre-calculated move database and just use the mask for current given given piece that moves. Uh, like either this is the bishop or rook, so the mask where it moves, and also the occupancy, uh, occupancy the current. Uh, a capacity bit board that uh, says like where all the pieces are uh, are available, and uh, and also so-called magic number. It's a bit of a uh, absolutely different topic to talk about, which uh, which can be discussed really uh, uh, for a big amount of time. However, I did uh, uh, cover this in my five video series on uh, making bit board uh, chess engine C and. Uh, all this generating, uh, like uh, this uh, magic bit boards for uh, pre calculated attack tables, all this stuff is covered in this sort of a tutorial. So, uh, let's go further on. So, uh, so the idea is in case of bit boards, so one of the major reasons is to avoid on the fly attack generation and instead use a lookup, and obviously, this is kind of much faster, right? So with bit boards, we do save a uh, uh, big amount of time by simply not calculating the attacks on the fly. And that's the reason why we can have a really faster mode generator. However, when it comes to practice, you know, like when I did implement my very first uh, bit board <laughs> mode generator, it was around uh, probably six or even 10 times slower compared to array based one. So you really need to to, to get your hands dirty, dirty into it in order to make sure that uh, you actually do uh, uh, make all, all this stuff properly because it's, it's not really that trivial. So uh, the fact that you're using bit boards doesn't yet mean that your motion rate would be faster. You, you really need to understand what you're doing there in order to make, uh, in, in order to m make it beneficial for your engine. So here is, uh, here it is, uh, here is the stuff regarding the Emergeneration, and the reason why I really wanted to cover this is because 
literally all the engines uh well i don't may, maybe some of those engines that is uh above 3000 may, maybe some of them actually uses something else than magic bit boards but i really doubt about this and you know like uh actually for the last uh few years all the engine all this kind of serious strong engines uh i've been uh, researching uh their service code they all do have this magic bit, bit board so as, as i've been mentioning already this is kind of like a today's de facto world standard because it's really kind of the fastest way to generate the moves and before uh, people were, uh, were were using things like rotated bit boards as it was in a craft if i'm not mistaken chess engine but even in craft i, I guess it has been changed to magic bit boards as well so literally really lots of engines has it has switched to magic bit boards because like it's really the uh, today's fastest way of generate moves for chess uh and even for chess variants like cnc and jungi as as is shown in uh fairy stockfish which is the chess variant uh, which is the stockfish fork for chess variants by fabian victor uh and he uses bit boards for uh generating uh moves for this uh, specific, very specific pieces, sliding pieces, let, let's say like cannons. So it's not the case, but j just to give you an idea that bit boards uh, uh, really can be used not only for chess, but for chess variants as well. The only reason, the only difference is that, let's say in Chinese chess, CNC in, in Korean chess, Jengi, the board is greater than in chess. It's not eight by eight, it's nine by, it's nine by 10 squares. And they use 128 bit, bits, bit, bits, bit board in order to store the entire position because 64 bits is literally not enough. There are really much more squares there. But the principle is the same, and again, like uh, people didn't yet work uh, that that sort of a thing that deeply yet, because uh, for international Western chess, really lots of optimizations has been invented based on the uh, specifics of the rules themselves. Well, this sort of work wasn't yet done for chess variants like CNC or Jungi. And me personally, uh, uh, when I've been working on my CNC uh, uh, engine. Uh, I was using the array based mode generator because I didn't really see any sense to use uh, uh, to use bit boards because uh, the only evaluation that I use for didactic purposes in my work is just material count and p square tables and it's better to put time and effort to fine tune uh, using some machine learning techniques just to find fine tune this uh, a very this few evaluation parameters. Uh, it's really better than if you have many parameters, but they are not tuned or if you have just a few parameters But they are tuned very well. So the second case you would be having a really stronger engine So up to 200 L points as really lo lots of people has reported already and uh, I've uh, I've been encountering that on my own, on my side as well. So that's really That's really the case. So there was you know, like uh, uh, it wasn't like uh, a one day switch from handcrafted evaluation to say uh, you know, like uh, to if to efficient lab dateable neural networks there, there was uh, an in-between stage where people started 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 using so-called uh, automated uh, automated tuning for evaluation function based on machine learning algorithms well, mo mostly uh, the most popular is Texel's tuning which is uh, Oh my god, I forgot this term. Uh, regression, some sort of regression. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Just uh, uh, apart from anything else, I'm just le learning Korean now. Just not the programming language, it's just spoken language, right? And uh, I just really have so many information in my head now that I just start, that, that, that I actually start, start forgetting <laughs> something that I knew before. So, uh, logistic regression, oh my god, here is the term. So, the Texel, the Excel student method is uh, based on logistic regression algorithm. So, that's that's kind of it. So, uh, you might wonder that how binary, uh, how, how the pre predicting of binary outcome might do the trick however uh it actually can and there are really lots of materials on how, how to make this and I I even if i managed to implement that at least at its very basic form then that means that it's not really that difficult so uh what else to say so we we have stopped at the mood generation and array based versus bitboards uh representation which again like 
is important but not definitely not the major part of, of where the strength comes from and uh, it also just happened now that I did cover the evolution of the evaluation functions in chess engine as well so started from handcrafted values and then they started using this automated tuning which which kind of uh, allowed to gain up to probably around like up to 200 other points for an engine just very average but uh, again like it depends on how how weirdly tuned the, uh, the the values are if you start from random numbers the uh, uh, the growth of elo would be probably more, even more significant so but around it, it's around 200 elo points for uh for uh, uh, yeah, this is something that you can get from this automated tuner. Again, like depending on how well do you implement that. And those engines like that were quite pretty nice before the, that tuning. Uh, they, uh, well, uh, let's say Texel itself, I'm not sure, but probably it, uh, uh, according to P Peter Osterlund, the author of Texel, he reported that he gained around 100 other points. He had several sessions or stages around six, six stages apparently. I'm not sure. And generally, the overall uh, increase, uh, the, the overall growth of the ELO strength was something around 100 ELO points. I might be wrong though. It's all it's all available. The chess program in Wikipedia. Just search for Texel Student and, uh, and all that stuff would be av uh, available there. I just can't cover every single topic in one video, so. Let's move further on. Okay, guys. So the next thing to, and the next and the last and the most important and the most significant uh, thing uh, of where the search actually of where this chess engine strength is coming from is the search. So the deeper your engine can search, the stronger it is, and the faster it does it, the faster it is. Evolution matters, but again, like search is like everything for alpha beta engines well I, i'm not talking about uh engines like uh lila chess zero at the moment because they have absolutely different architecture and their strength is entirely based on the quality of the network itself and obviously everything i'm talking about this video uh only is only applicable to alpha beta engines like like stockfish okay so ju just to, just to give you an idea because maybe if someone doesn't know this this is really important because uh, these are two absolutely different approaches to 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 get to get this plane strength. Let's say so. So uh, before we start having a look at the particular implementations of the alphabet search routine in Stockfish and in the, in Demolito and also in my Ukunjs, we'll probably start with Ukunjs because it's the most uh, the, it has the easiest and the most clear representation uh, I've reworked my BBC search routines I've fixed some bugs in Wukun.js and despite the fact it's in JavaScript it's still uh, I really like this code much more it's more clear more more efficient by the way yeah and I've been reusing this for chess variants like CNC as well so it's it's, re it's really nice for its own niche and it does uh, also does involve all the major uh, alphabet search optimization techniques however the gap between my engines and like three southern plus engines is just absolutely a base gap it's absolutely fantastic gap it's more than 1000 elo points and here is the most uh here is the most important stuff comes that in order to make the search strong it's not the matter of picking as many uh, optimization techniques as possible even though it's also the case however it's not the major one but the major thing is how deeply you work all this search optimization techniques and how well do you understand them and how many work are you ready to put into this in order to get that sort of a result however again like uh, bear in mind the fact that all this work has been done already and Unfortunately, most people don't go for this sort of way, so this sort of an approach, because when you just can grab everything from Stockfish and try to arrange that in your own way, try to hide that behind your coding style, and you actually do have a search that is pretty equal to Stockfish's search, right? And uh, and three thousand plus 
LO uh, uh, engines are arising from nowhere, uh, like every next day, every single day, right? So that's a uh, that's a little bit of of a problem. So uh, before we go to this to the specific uh, to the deep into to 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 the specific uh, searches search routines. Uh, the given engines, just a few words regarding the alphabet algorithm itself. So, the, you know, like, I don't really uh, want to dive into the explanation of the algorithms uh, because, well, first of all, the matter of being able to apply this algorithm and to get the results and understanding of the algorithm are a bit two different things. And the understanding for application and understanding for uh, giving a lecture at the university are kind of two different understandings, well, at least in my Kilmaki Keynes experience. So I will try to explain this uh, from the applied perspective, from the practical perspective. So the idea is very simple. Uh, let's imagine the brute force search. So the idea of the brute force search is very simple. You just need to traverse all of the nodes possible, right? But in alphabet search, the idea is very simple. So if you see that uh, you have a branch where you're losing a piece, you don't really want to search it further on because whatever uh, score uh, would be deeper in this branch, uh, anyway, this branch is, not, is no longer going to be considered because the root node has uh, insignificant score. And this would be dropped. So uh, the major idea is to produce the cutoff of the branch that doesn't make sense to search for as soon as possible. And all the vast majority of uh, all the vast majority of uh, alphabet search optimizations in today's world-class engines, uh, it all comes to trying to make these cutoffs as soon as possible. And uh, again, like alpha in beta, so alpha is the side who is maximizing the score and beta is the side who is minimizing the score. And when it comes to, uh, when we uh, call it recursively, this, uh, like in 99% uh, per of the cases, the cases it uses so-called Ningamax framework. So the idea is that we negate the score and alpha becomes beta and beta becomes alpha. That's the reason why we say like uh, minus search, minus beta, minus alpha and depth minus one. That's, that's the major algorithm for recursively calling the alphabet a search routine itself. And, you know, like, uh, so, uh, all the node savings, so by saying node savings, I mean, like, uh, avoiding uh, th those branches that not giving you uh, good results, uh, uh, well, they, they are called beta cutoffs because uh, the idea is the following. So, uh, so alpha uh, in the alpha beta search. Well, uh, there are kind of two f major frameworks like fail soft and fail hard. And the difference is that in the fail soft framework, you have a best score that can exceed the alpha beta bounds. And in fail hard frame hard, hard framework, uh, that is not a low. So in fail hard framework, you cannot exceed the alpha beta bounds. And just for clarity and, and for simplicity, uh, I would stick to fail hard framework, and that's the one that's the framework that I've been you, uh, that I've been implementing in both in my BBC and OkunJS. So the idea is very simple. Uh, the faster uh, uh, the faster this uh, so uh, yeah, and in this in the fail in the fail hard framework, alpha uh, alpha score acts as the best score in the brute force search algorithm. So. Uh, we try to increase the alpha rate, and there are two types of nodes. So those that do increase the alpha are called PV nodes or principal variation nodes. So every time when we do find a better move, so this is called a principal variation node. And also all, all, all the nodes that do not increase the value of alpha are called uh, fail low no nodes. So those that do not uh, increase the value of alpha. And the third kind of nodes uh, are known as the beta cutoffs. So this means that move is so bad that we don't ever want to consider it. And the entire logic of uh, optimizing the alpha beta search is the following. So we do optimize, the, uh, uh, we're trying to uh, take every part of this alpha beta search, like the, the one dealing with the principal variation nodes and trying to consider only those we're interested in 
trying to reduce the number of fail low notes and uh, things like late move reduction, the techniques like late move reduction are used in that case. So the idea is that the nodes that do not increase the value of alpha uh, shouldn't be really searched that much. And we do, uh, and depending on the difficulty of the implementation, uh, people just reduce the, the search depth for those nodes and eventually that allows to uh, spend really less time and processing power to uh, search those nodes because we do assume that most likely there won't be any uh, move that would eventually increase the value of alpha, right? And one of the major kind of, uh, one of the major things that actually do speed up the search is the beta cutoffs. So the, the, this is the, the beta cutoffs uh, is the most explored territory probably. Well, actually all this territory is well explored through the years, but the beta cutoffs is the most influential in terms of it really allows to strip, I don't know, probably like 90% of garbage uh, branches in in this chest search tree traversal. And one of the major techniques is called uh, no null move pruning. So the ideas uh, behind this is very simple. We don't make a move, we just change the site and try to search that with reduced depth. And in that case, if not only if this is not only a Zagzwang, in that case, uh, we do uh, reveal uh, the no the moves that might uh, potentially uh, make the beta cutoff occur. And we do those beta cutoffs uh, before ever searching the next moves, uh, before ever searching the moves for uh, for the actual site. And uh, and this technique is one, one of the earliest, probably, it's it's been invented a really long time ago. I no, don't remember where exactly this happened, but th th this, is, this is one of the major uh, fundamental, one of the most fundamental techniques in alphabet search optimizations, basically. And, but again, like, based on that idea, uh, people do the same, but using just the evaluation score, and that is also called, like, uh, static evaluation, uh, like uh, static null move pruning, evaluation pr pruning, uh, and uh, etc. and so on and so forth. So uh, the uh, uh, the major idea is try to make this beta cutoff occur as soon as possible. But all this stuff doesn't mean literally anything without the major, without the core gist essence of the alpha beta search, which is a move ordering. So the idea is that, let's say, captures uh, would most likely uh, uh, would most likely uh, provide the, uh, the beta cutoff because let's say you have a capture where you're losing a queen, so you need to for, to search that first before any com moves, right? Because you're just going to lose material significantly, and all the rest uh, doesn't really make sense. So the idea, uh, so move ordering is something that allows the engine to search for first lines first and then try to have a look at the calm moves. And generally the move, generally the move uh, ordering uh, breaks into two parts. So ordering the captures and there are two major techniques that does allow doing that. So the first one is uh, so-called MVVLV order. So most valuable victim, less valuable attacker. So we do uh, try to search for the moves like uh, pawn captures queen first, and then we're searching for the moves like queen captures pawn. And this allows to, uh, to get the most significant uh, improvements uh, in, terms of, uh, uh, in, in terms of making the beta cutoff occur as soon as possible because captures are very essential. Then for calm moves, there are really lots of uh, techniques or like the most common ones are history heuristics so we're trying to order the moves that has increased the value of alpha in the previous iteration first uh, and also one or two killer moves uh, those that did uh, uh, did lead to a beta cutoff occurrence in the previous iteration or the iteration before the previous one so those moves are order so first we uh, we order in the first killer so the one that has uh, the, the move that did uh, did make the beta cutoff in the previous iteration, then the second, uh, one like two iterations uh, behind, and then the history moves like those that has been uh, increasing the value of alpha. 
and that's the way how to uh, uh, that's the general like uh, approach to order come moves so those moves that are not captures right and actually this are all uh, I'll just try to to, desc to describe the core gist of whatever chess engine and the the number of actual techniques so uh, you know, like, I, I just try to focus on the process on the optimization process of the alphabet search itself like the core parts it consists of rather than just naming the techniques and trying to walk through them and trying to des describe them uh, but the idea is that all of these techniques are already well known and they're kind of like de facto best practices for implementing those sort of a techniques like norm of pruning, late mode reduction, razor in, uh, evaluation pruning, whatever, like uh, futility pruning and re really lots of things. So every single part of the uh, a a every single type of alphabet of search tree knows like fail high, fail, lo fail low and uh, and this uh, and the beta cutoffs. Uh, all, uh, all this, all this type of nodes uh, are being sliced as much as they can, and that's the core uh, just behind the uh, optimizing the search. And eventually, we do end up with narrowing, narrowing the search tree. And the, nar the more narrow the search tree is, the less time and processing power is taken in order to get the best move out of the given position. And it means that we can actually search deeper, and the deeper we search. The more pre the more precise uh, the more precise uh, results we have. Well, also I did forget uh, I forgot to mention the quest and search, and the idea is to get rid of the horizon effect of the alphabet itself. So let's say we do capture a pawn with a queen, and we say and we think that we're pawn up, and if we stop searching here, the disaster would happen because we will lose our queen for a pawn, right? So in order to avoid this sort of a thing. Every time uh, we exhaust the search depth, uh, because of the search depth itself, or because we're out, we are out of time. Uh, in that case, we need to make some safety search, or it's called a quest and search. The idea is that if there are any uh, captures within the position, we need to make all the captures and to evaluate the composition where there are no more captures in the position to properly evaluate the current given position. So and that's uh, in that case we say that okay taking this pawn with the queen is a bad idea because eventually we'll lose a queen but in order to get to know that we need to make this question search and question search is literally the uh, the same like it's very similar to alphabet search the difference is that it only takes into account a capture not the come move and it it, it also has uh, uh so like uh it has the same type of nodes. So literally, quest and search is the alphabet search. The, the, the only difference is the type of moves that only captures. So all the techniques, like uh, like sorting the moves, it's all applicable. However, uh, people do involve some specific techniques for quest and search as well, because quest is something that that is really time consuming in, in the search itself. Because so yeah i i, I mean like there, there are some specific tricks that regards to questions in particular that are not applicable to alphabet search and also some people search for uh not only captures but for checks like forcing most like checks uh etc so it also arguable whether to detect repetitions in the questions or not whether to collect the principal variations and so on so it, 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 it all this stuff really depends so now when we have uh uh, kind of like a general understanding of this part of the chess engine uh, that does influence the plane strength, we can actually come to uh, the certain implementations. And I would like to start with my own... Uh, I don't even want to go for BBC. Let's actually start with my Ukun.js because, well, first of all, it's a single file. And uh, also it's good because here in chess program uh, Wikipedia, all the core features are uh, highlighted. I'm not sure if this is so in Demolito. Yeah, this is so in Demolito as well. So I, I just, just want to give you an idea. So, well, probably Ukun have, it doesn't even have more features compared to Demolito. However, uh, Ukun is only 1800s, while Demolito is uh, more than 3000s, 3200s, something like that. 
So just to give you an idea that the matter of collecting these uh, techniques is doesn't really mean anything. However, uh, the most the major reason behind creating my BBC and Okun and actually the major reason uh, behind creating all of my engines, as it clearly stated on Chess Program Wikipedia. Uh, how they say this? Uh, 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 development of various chess engines for didactic purposes, and th this is the core gist of my work here on YouTube and in the, within the uh, within the chess programming community as well. So what I do is I'm making engines for didactic purposes, which means that I sacrifice literally, literally everything just to make the engine highlighting. Uh, the core gist essence of what it does consist of instead of obfuscating the implementation for the performance or something so that's the reason why guys you when you're asking me please make the strongest chess engine in the world as i always say i won't be doing this because this would violate the core principle i follow within my entire life so what i'm trying to follow is try to make as clear as simple as possible so like transparent stuff and I do pay, like, uh, I don't have a strength, but I, I never uh, aim the strength in my life. And I, don't, I personally think this doesn't, doesn't really make sense, well, this to me. However, it's on your own to decide whether it's a good idea for you or not. So, without further ado, let's actually have a look at the core features of my Ukun JS. So, uh, it, has, uh, the, it relies on hexadecimal 88 board presentation, which is the... Uh, one of the fastest array-based uh, array-based uh, board representations. It also uh, keeps track of the piece of the piece list. The idea is just to instantly know where uh, uh, the square occupied by the by the certain piece. Uh, kind of lookup table, uh, which is incrementally updated along with the board array. So it's it's good for uh, it's good for evaluation because you don't need to make an extra loop over the board array. You can just use this lookup. And here is the, the major part, so the search, search itself. We don't take a look at the evaluation because it's not really mine, so I've been reusing like Pesto uh, tapered evaluation from Rob Jade by Ronald Frederick. Uh, I, was, uh, I was playing around with the Texel's tuning method, but eventually, oh, actually, no, no, this one doesn't, this one doesn't use the stock machine any, my BBC didn't use the stock machine any, this Ukon doesn't, doesn't do, do, but doesn't matter. So the core thing is here. So. Well, iterative dipping is must have for every engine because it's the matter of uh, handling the timing apart uh, apart from ordering the move. So, uh, iterative dipping serves, serves two purposes or uh, move ordering. So you can order the moves that are considered to be the best uh, in the previous iteration to be searched next in the next iteration. So it's another improvement of the move ordering itself. Uh, uh, principal variation search uh, is is not how it sounds is actually just just a way to slightly improve the alphabet algorithm itself so nothing special there really uh hash table uh i don't know why they call it repetition it's not actually i actually have a separate i have the repetition table and the hash table i don't know why, why they why they make it like repetition hash table it's not really that true so a hash table uh is needed in order to a white assertion for the most you already know the scores for so just another savings the move ordering techniques that i've been mentioning so principal move variation ordering uh, most valuable vic victim less valuable attacker killer moves those uh that uh, that brought you to the beta cutoffs in the previous iterations history heuristics those moves that did increase the value of alpha in the previous iterations and the major kind of strength comes from this, what is called selectivity. So uh, every time when uh, Keen has been exposed into a check, we do increase the surge depth. That's that's needed in order to. It's the most basic technique every engine uses, really. Uh, well, every strong engine uses. So the idea is uh, every time we find our Keen in check, we need to in increase the depth in order to. Uh, avoid blundering forcing lines where your kin can forcingly get mated. Uh, 
Uh, main distance running is just defensive technique to avoid spending time when it's like mating one or mating two. You don't really need to search deeper. Static null move running. Uh, I've, I've been described discussing this already when I was discussing the null move running. So static null move running, null move running, razor in futility running, extended futility running. Did I do this? I don't know what they mean by saying this. Late move reductions and questions. And here is it. So here are the core select uh, yeah, they call it selectivity techniques, right? And uh, we'll have a look at the code. But before that, I just want to show you uh, some somewhat unequal uh, features for Demolitor, which is way, way stronger. So let's just have a look. So Demolito is this here is the rating and Ukun.js is here is the rating. So it's a base gap behind them, right? So just to give you an idea that just uh, again like the didactic impl implementation and the implementation uh, like the implementation that is optimized for didactic purposes and the implementation that is optimized for speed and strength are two different worlds completely however the techniques themselves are actually the same so uh what demolito does so let's go to search uh well uh lazy smp so this is just the multi-threading so it gives around uh, i don't know maybe up to up to 200 little points just because you use uh, different cores of the of your processor so this is just the pure hardware optimization i never do it because i don't see any sense in this because it's like steroids like you're just gaining muscles like bodybuilders it doesn't make sense to me at all basically uh, because you know like um, it's not chess programming it's just a matter of how to make use of your processors something i'm absolutely not interested in hence never never doing this well the rate of dipping has been mentioned already uh aspiration windows is another little trick to, for uh that goes along with the iterative dipping i've been using this in bbc however i didn't use it in ukun because it doesn't give a major improvement principal duration search was transposition table so transposition table itself might be i don't know like up to probably 500 other points difference like the most basic transposition table implementation that i have it strips all, only like for two it, it, it allows to it allows the search to go two three plies deeper but let's say the transposition table in my engine and that we how the transposition table implemented in this demolito or in stockfish it would allow the engine to go not two three plies deeper but five seven plies deeper so it's the very it's so big so 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 big difference so the way how to implement the transposition table is also different so you can just go for deeply into transposition tables and again like just die there right so absolutely separate topic for 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 research basically well zobra session is you know, uh, just for uh actually indexing this transposition table and for repetition detection, I also have that selectivity, evolution, pruning, razoring, null move, pruning, late move reduction, reduction. So this is these are the same. But again, like see, like uh, razor and futility, extended futility, yeah, late move reduction. So the techniques are the same. But again, like every single technique uh, can be implemented at the different levels of, you know, like you may put more effort into it, and you you may start obfuscating complicating uh the technique itself let's say for null move running you can just go for reduced depth and that's it or you can invent uh like uh, this big functions to calculate the proper formula to calculate the uh, reduced depth for say either for null move running or for late or for late move reductions etc so that's that's also something that one can go for but again like when you have stockfish where you can just grab that from many people just go for that and you just they just grab the search from stockfish and they have another yet another 3000 plus uh elo uh, points uh plane uh elo points plane strength chess engine so unfortunately that's that's what's happening 
uh, quiz and search. Yeah, also, yeah, the model uses uh, static, uh, static exchange evaluation, which is another uh, significant technique for optimizing exactly the questions. I don't have that. Uh, that's just a bit you know, like, it's just really complicated itself. And I just trying to take the most common, the most important techniques in my engines for didactic purposes. So static evaluation, uh, st static exchange evaluation is not one of them. And uh, apart from MVVLUA and history here, heuristic, he doesn't even use killers. Yeah, that's, that doesn't really give that significant result. But he uses the refutation table, which is another advanced uh, thing for, for move ordering. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not even looking at the, into the evaluation because, yeah, recently all the engines are actually switching to, switching to efficient updatable neural networks. I'm not, I'm not sure whether this is the case of, of the Molotov or not. So now guys, uh, the very last thing I would like to demonstrate, right, is just to, is just to have a look at the source code apparently. Yeah. So here I have the source code for the Molotov, but let's start with my Ocon because it's way easier to, to see, uh, how the things work there. So, yeah, let's go for this one. And one of the upsides of my engine, of my engines, they, uh, in most cases, they are the single file, which is really nice and easy to learn from. So if I just search for search, okay. Uh, one. Yeah, here it is. So here is the core Ningamax search, Ningamax search routine. I'm not looking at the iterative dip in and out. It's not really the case. So, and yeah, by the way, all the transposition table stuff, uh, I have it separate. And uh, yeah, yeah, so, so the, yeah, the search starts here. So here is the lookup table for most valuable victim, less valuable attacker, uh, some, uh, some constants that I do use. Uh, some arrays to like principal variation, kill, uh, killer table, history most table, uh, repetition table, uh, timing to drop the search when the time is up, and uh, some helper functions. Yeah, so here is the move order in. So here uh, we do sort of the moves. So to search those that most likely would be le leading to beta cutoffs, uh, also sorting the PV moves, a little bit of redundancy redundancy when it comes to hash tables, so it doesn't really make that much sense of using this, of sorting the principal variation when you do have a, a transposition table, because uh, most likely the hash move would be, uh, either would it be the principal variation move as well, or just allows to, uh, still allows to, to better order the moves. However, I left this for didactic purposes because uh, let's say you don't want to you don't want to involve the, the transposition table. In that case, you can just drop that, but still you can still have this sort of the principal variation move, and this is going to be working, and it's better when uh, compared to if you don't have this. Uh, well, quiescence is very basic here, so just just a very just the most basic implementation possible actually, and let's go to the Nigamax search itself. So. Uh, so we start from, uh, before actually, uh, doing anything, we do read the hash, uh, the hash table. That's what the most, like, yeah, literally all the engines do this. So first try to read the uh, hash entry. Uh, so if we did search for this already, we just return the score instantly and we're not going to all of this stuff. We just return the score and that's it. This is available at the transposition table. Very simple, uh, a simple routine to. Uh, figure out whether we, whether we still have the time to search. Uh, uh, Three-fold repetition detection and the 50 rule move detection as well. So if we do uh, have either the repetitions, three-fold repetition or 50 rule move counter uh, being equal to 100 in place or in moves, this is 50, like 100 divided by two. Then we just return zero, which uh, which might be replaced by so-called contempt factor. So let's say if you want your engine to avoid draws, you can return like minus here. And in this case, 
your engine would be thinking that he is worth and it would be trying to improve and try to find another move but this might be a bad idea in case if you just go for some losing variation potentially uh, so the condition to escape from uh, the condition to escape from uh, the recursive Megamax search is when the depth is equal to zero. We do count the nodes and return the questions. I've been described discussing why this is happening. Uh, main distance running might be safely dropped because it doesn't give anything to the strength. Uh, in check uh, lets the engine know whether the king has been exposed into a check or not to, to increase the depth in case. So this is the, the in check. This is the check extension. So we are in the check. Uh, if we are within the check, we do increase the depth, and then the major pruning stuff uh, stops. So if we are not in check and we are not in the principal variation, no, we start from. Uh, so first we just get in the static evaluation because we would be reusing the static evaluation for a current given position uh, many times in the future. So evaluation pruning. So first technique so if we are if the null move is low then we go for null move running then we go for razoring i'm not going to be diving deeply into this ju ju just to give you an idea how, how these techniques are coming then we go for then we when we need to uh initialize the futility margin and here is the specific formula to uh this to make to either to set the fidelity pruning flex equal to one or not. so whether so just to figure out whether we are allowed to make this futility pruning or not. Then finally we generate the moves, we sort the moves, uh, so, sorry, sort the PV move, and then we loop over all the moves. So this is the core part. Uh, so here, uh, when we loop over the moves, we need to make sure that every next move would be ordered appropriately. So the, the sort moves routine has been separated here, as you've seen above in the service code. Then we just make move, and then we just take back. But before we take back, so here, here is here is the deal. So if the facility running and the bunch of parameters uh, are okay, so then we just take back, which means so futility running literally says like, okay, this is this is the futile line we don't really need to search it we just take back and continue so we're not even searching this we're not going recursively there otherwise we go for a normal uh alphabet of search and if we did search for some moves already and uh in this case so here is the here here is the counter for a move that we've searched so far uh, no no this is legal moves no sorry move searched here move searched yeah, move search uh, get an increase after yeah after the move has been taken back. Sorry. So uh, late move reduction is involved in case if we did uh, walk through the first major moves like the hash table move, uh, like principal variation move, if any, uh, MVLV order moves, like killer moves, history moves. So the first like five six moves that most likely are to be considered as the uh, one of them most likely would be considered as the principal as the next principal variation move uh, so just in order to save some time on searching for the rest like 15 10 or 15 moves that are available within the position we do this uh, sort of a late move reduction so we uh, generally we do a recursive call but uh, I simply use depth minus two here and again, like uh, strong engines like Demolito or Stockfish could have another like 20, 30 lines of code to calculate the depth, the reduced depth here. And again, like because my engine is just made for didactic purposes, I don't really care about this. So I just say that here we do search with reduced depth. However, you want to make this, I don't know, 100 little points stronger, 200 little points stronger. You can really uh, provide some complicated logic on how exactly to calculate this. Uh, reduction depth limit so it might uh, be dependent on really numerous sort of uh, uh, circumstances behind it right uh, principal variation search is not not that special to to discuss and here uh, the the major alpha beta stuff so if we if the score is greater than alpha we do update the alpha we store the principal variation move so if this is uh, not a capture, we update our history moves for removal rain. If this is the beta cutoff, then we 
do write the hash entry. Yeah, by the way, we, we should write the hash entry. No, no, we don't write we don't write it there. Yeah. So we write the hash entry on the beta cutoffs. On the beta cutoffs, we also if uh, yeah, if it's not a capture, then that's important that we just store the killer moves for non-capture uh move order in and finally return beta. And the faster this beta cutoff occurs, the last nodes would be traversed. The faster engine would be, the deeper it would be able to search, and so on. And checkmate detection is trivial. And finally, we also want to write the hash, uh, the hash entry. So this would be either, either the exact score in case if uh, alpha has been increased, or if it wasn't increased, this would be the alpha score. So uh, three sort of what, like uh, alpha score, beta score, and the exact score. That's the most basic way of how to write uh, entries to the hash table and in my case I use the most simple possible uh, scheme schema which is called always replace so whatever new value I do encounter I always replace the previously uh, the, the previous value that was there again like not the most efficient but the most easy to understand one and again like all this stuff has been covered in uh, BBC tutorials uh, even though it's a different engine but uh, all this stuff is quite pretty similar so I've been discussing and describing and making tutorials on how this stuff kind of works and yeah this is just the iterative depending framework I believe yeah uh, yeah here is the iterative depending which actually calls this Nigamax search so and this this is kind of the skeleton. So the difference between my engine, all of my engines, right, and kind of this work class drawn engines is that is is the same as the difference between the skeleton and the difference between like bodybuilder's body. So there is really lots of meat there, like all these muscles, you're getting really lots of stuff around this. And here is the deal. Uh, just because I don't really love those muscles, I, I, I hate them personally, I, I don't see any sense in them. Uh, but the skeleton is essential. So I just do these skeletons, right? And what people do, they just take an existing skeleton and try to gain as many muscles as possible on that. And that's the reason why their engines are much, much stronger. So the more muscles you're putting there, the stronger it becomes. Again, like something that's probably the most useless thing to me in regards to my life but this nobody really probably care about this and nobody really should care about this so okay guys now let's go to the Molotov source code so the good thing that it's written in C I really love C, uh, C, C language uh, something that I don't like is that this tones of false and again like I do understand this and again like uh, oh just just having a look at the file names I already see the big influence but by stockfish so like this position c position a search u and uci like workers so it's all it's really you're not you're like uh, uh you're not uh well definitely i don't say that the model is a clone or something not at all it's really kind of good work and i really love the engine it's not the point uh i mean just that's the issue of all the engines that are stronger than the resultants they all look like stockfish and i don't know probably we should we should start with with stockfish itself but no let's actually start with this one so let's go to the search and i will i just want to show you the alphabet routine here as well uh it's called just search i, gu I guess yeah the, we, we just well uh well obviously the questions is uh really way more complicated here as well which is another topic that i don't really want to talk about here yeah but and here is here is the main alphabet search so it takes uh so it's uh, bearing in mind the fact that this the, this is the multi-threaded search it also it needs to take a pointer to the uh worker thread that current that that actually handles the current uh the current search apart from the standard pointer to the position ply depth alphabet and all this stuff so uh and again, like uh, uh, margins, like for evaluation, for razoring, uh, I don't know. I probably, I, I was probably using the only evaluation margin, uh, regardless of depth. However, here it should be. It feels like yeah, it probably depends on depth. Not sure. So uh, again, like the better these values tuned, the stronger the engine would be. And we'll come to this a bit, a little bit later on. 
uh, okay. Yeah, and then it goes absolutely the same. So hash table probe, just just like what we we've seen in my engine. So we do uh, read the uh, hash table entry, and in case if that works, we just return the, the score of this hash entry, and we're done. So it's, it's all very very similar. Yeah. So also, uh, this is just the the move order and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Again, like evaluation, pruning, razoring. So you know, like, it's all like null move pruning. So uh, I, I I look at this code like uh, the first time was before I started making this video. Now it's the second time. So it's like it's it's, it's really similar. Null move search. So all the same, all the same stuff. Uh, yeah, some interesting hacks. And then we go for generator moves. So it's like just visually, it's doesn't seem that way more complicated but again like it's all the matter of purposes so when you want to so what do you focus at so whether you focus at the skeleton like I do or whether you don't care about the skeleton but you focus on getting the muscle weight so all these guys who are trying to make this work class strong engine they all do focus on this muscle gain uh, get, get, uh, on getting the, uh, the muscle weight and that's kind of it and and you just have a look at the bodybuilders right like human bodybuilders they all the same they just have tones of muscles in them and uh, they very similar right so no not much difference they all the same they have big shoulders like you know, all this stuff and i don't i don't really see any sense in that you know, like maybe someone think that is beautiful but you know like uh yeah so Okay, I just just don't really want to speak about this depressing things. Uh, I just just have too 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 many. I have too much of my personal opinion at this point that uh, I don't really want want to share because uh, it doesn't regard to chess programming directly. So let's just actually drop drop this move loop. So yeah, I think this is the loop over all of the moves. Yeah. So yeah search so yeah it has it has more extensions than just uh, uh than in, than the check extension so yeah and here is the yeah and here is here is yeah the part that and again like probably this code has been inspired by exactly the same the same code that my code has been inspired being inspired by and it takes the root from the stockfish again like so that's that's kind of it so go for a norm, normal search otherwise we uh, when we have searched the major moves we go for this principal variation and reductions and yeah so it's all the same yeah so yeah uh, okay So I just okay guys I just I don't even know how to explain this I just just want to give you an idea that the skeleton is the same right but this significant huge difference in strength comes from this damn muscle weight that I really hate right and when you're trying to force me uh, start dealing with this muscle weight I'm not going to be doing this because uh, that is something that uh, that violates my life principle so I don't really want to go for that really okay and. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the matter of this strong engines is the, the more this muscle weight the engine has, the stronger it plays. And again, like just don't, 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 don't I don't, I don't even want to talk about this. Okay, so it's clear. I, I hope that the skeleton is uh, is clear. Like this is like the same skeleton in uh, a very weak engine like my Okun Jazz and this very strong en engine like Demolito. But now let's have a look at the Stockfish uh, and uh, within the Stockfish's code. Uh, so we need to go to search CPP. Uh, search CPP. Uh, one of the good things behind Stockfish is that mm, the longer Stockfish is being developed uh, 
the more simplified it code its code get uh, its code gets right so it gets simplified we, uh, through the years uh, and let's say stockfish's code say five five years ago and stockfish's code now so now it's really way easier to read through the read through this and to understand how it works so yeah uh i just want to go uh, remember how uh, where is the main thread search i just want to find the alphabet search okay let's try to search for alpha yeah here it is so just search right value search actually stockfish's source code does answer this with the question on <laughs> where the plane strength is coming from just directly in the commentaries and uh, uh, I guess like how many so well okay uh, let's try to walk through the skeleton again so here they start with repetitions and if they do have the, uh, the repetition then just drop back from the search just like all the alphabet searches do uh, do go for questions in terms in cases in case if the depth is equal to zero so literally when we uh, ju just the condition to escape from the recursion uh, from from the recursive loop and here uh, what is really good and uh, kind of like educative probably in stockfish that they do break down their alphabet routine into the steps up to 20 steps if i'm not mistaken so well step one is just initial initializations check for available remaining time so yeah all, all this skeleton kind of part all the same used to okay uh May distance prawning, yeah, all this, all, all the same. Sick, uh, and and I swear, guys, when I was when I was when I was making my own engine, I didn't even uh, have a look at the source code of the stockfish because at that time uh, I I didn't even think that I would be able to understand it, believe it or not. And one of the core reasons why actually I started all my didactic work is because uh, I wasn't actually able to grab some code from stockfish and make use of it. I can't do it now. And quite a fun thing that uh, now when only those guys that are very lazy can come up with their own 3000 plus chess engines, <laughs> only in that case, uh, uh, you know, like only in that case, uh, they don't come up with those. I was, I was, I was a very, very lazy, but even being absolutely lazy, uh, I don't know how this happened, but... Uh, my BBC actually is rated almost like 3000 on C serial. It's not Okun, yeah, but just have a look. Well, the major strength comes from the uh, Stockfish is sufficiently updatable neural networks, obviously. But uh, yeah, here it is. So. Yeah, let's actually go for uh, okay. Yeah, here here is my engine. So, and again, like uh, the skeleton and the meat, right? Well, also obviously JavaScript is much weaker, uh, much slower than uh, than C, but yeah, so. Even uh, even being lazy, even not caring <laughs> about uh, plane strength, this the, the, this is uh, the the rating of of BBC, and again, like the search of BBC is even worse than the search in Wukun. Wukun actually has a better search, believe it or not. However, <laughs> it's just <laughs> so way so, so way down here. Okay. Mm. I'll probably probably I would never ever be able to explain this. It's very personal, you know, like yeah, it's very personal. 
So by showing this stockfish's code, I just want to show you more meat on the skeleton, right? Just way more meat, may way more this muscle weight here. And this is where the strength comes from. Uh, yeah, and here, yeah, here, here, here is something interesting that that starts happening. So uh, when they come in stockfish, when they do use some specific uh, selectivity, like futility pruning in this case. So say they say gives around fifty LO. This null move surge gives around forty LO. Right? What else? Null move dynamic reduction base depth and value. What I've been mentioning. So instead of using the fixed reduction uh depth uh people can use really complicated obfuscated logic to calculate this depth dynamically and here is how here is the formula how stockfish does this right and how, how much does it give how much does it give uh it's a verification probing cut 10 lo uh transposition Okay, and still, okay, I don't know, did they remove this, oh, let's see here, Browning at shallow depth, so another, so yeah, this is somewhat a technique that doesn't seem to be available in the Molotov as well, definitely not available in, uh, in either BBC or Wukong, it gives 200 L points. SE base pruning, static exchange evaluation pruning, 25 LO points, and so on. Extensions generally give 75 LO points, yeah. Okay. Make the move. Late move reductions, uh, reduction gives around 200 LO points, bearing in mind the fact of having the dynamic reduction depth. Uh, calculation right it's around 200 L points reduction 10 L points 5 3 L points okay 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 and I guess when when I when I look at this uh, I don't know it doesn't make sense to me so much that uh, the only thing that happens when I have a look at Stockfish's search, search code, I just, I'm just getting depressed because it feels like, you know, like the lifetime and energy and energy are spent for purposes that do, don't make any sense at all. It's just like a waste of time for me. Waste of time, processing power. I don't know. It's really personal. Okay. So yeah. So questions another piece of meat here okay so um, where do we stop uh just need to try uh, just need trying to finish finish this video somehow so just trying to provide some sort, sort of a summary um, so the core difference between the didactic engines that i do and the strong world class engines is the matter of which part which concept which sort of a thing is getting emphasized so i mean like the skeleton is the same for all the engines because all the engines have like mode generator right uh search routine and the evaluation function and if we try to break down every single part into separate stages it also can like would be the same in structure so the skeleton of whatever chess engine it would always be the same like uh if we take a human skeleton it would always have this the scalp right uh the arm bones like the spine like uh, hips and knees, feet, etc. So it's just like a human skeleton, right? And then, unfortunately, yes, I say unfortunately because it's something that really depresses me a lot. But 
it's just I need to tell you my entire life story in order to give you an idea why I'm getting depressed but this, this is another topic this is this should should matter really in this uh, in this regards so then we take this skeleton and we're trying to bring as as much meat as possible as many muscle muscles as possible right and the the more fat it gets not fat like the more muscle weight it gains the stronger it uh, becomes and again like uh the emphasis of the didactic engines is when you try to make this skeleton as clear as possible and try to emphasize the skeleton and the major the most important in didactic chess programming what i do is trying to get rid of all of the meat of all of the muscles entirely because in that case you can actually see the skeleton because if you have all of these muscles you can hardly imagine what the skeleton is all about because these muscles are, are everywhere and you can't see the skeleton right so th this is the idea so all this power comes from these muscles like just analogy right and just to make a didactic engine you actually need to get rid of all of these muscles and focus on the skeleton itself but in that case you would have a weak engine right so that's a trade-off so the more muscles you have in your engine the stronger it becomes but its didactic value is getting lost so there is no more the no no uh, the didactic value your engine doesn't have didactic value anymore if it is if it's strong because of having these muscles on the other hand if your engine has uh an emphasis to an accent to this sort of a skeleton you do sacrifice all this muscle weight and in that case you don't have that strength but you have a crystal clear transparent image and a picture of the certain chess engine that you've developed and this is the exact goal that i have here on chess programming channel so guys i really hope that after this videos you will no longer be asking me about strength of chess engines just to avoid depressing me even more so i really hope that this video explanation is clear enough and good enough and this that it is actually enough to get done with the questions regarding the engine's strength and where it comes from once and forever so i really hope this makes sense and i guess this is it from my side so thanks for watching until the next time and take care